The irony couldn't be richer in that the ideological platform that is incessantly chanting support for women's rights is the very community that is aggressively stripping women of equality. If the left had their way, women wouldn't have equal competition in sports. If the left had their way, women who are survivors of domestic violence would be forced to live with men in safe housing. If the left had their way, women wouldn't be seen and valued for the distinct, honorable, and powerful, uniquely powerful qualities that only they possess. The left is trying to erase women's participation in society, and with this trajectory, they are trying to erase women's influence altogether. This is disturbing, this is harmful, and this is evil. We've heard it said before that silence in the, in, in the, in the face of injustice is injustice. To not act is to act, to not speak is to speak, and the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Well, thankfully, good men are standing up, or in the case of my guest here today, women are standing for truth, highlighting good, and calling out evil. Joining me today are two female athletes, Lainey Armistead and Madison Kenyon, who are not satisfied seeing their efforts and their sacrifices and those of their colleagues being undermined by unequal competition. Also joining me is their attorney, Christiana Kiefer, Senior Counsel at Alliance Defending Freedom. So Maddie, tell me a little about you and your story and why you decided to have a voice in this entire narrative. Yeah, so I run cross country and track at Idaho State University. And my freshman year, I ran against a biological male. Uh, this athlete beat me and beat um, hundreds of other women. And I raced against them five times. Um, through those experiences, I really, um, I really saw the differences between males and females and how biological differences are really important in sports. And that's why males don't compete against females. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the backlash been? Like, do you have, have you had responses from your peers, maybe family, uh, perhaps people who you're close to and didn't think you would have an adverse response from? Tell me. You know, I've actually been really fortunate. Um, the backlash has been few and far between. I've been overwhelmed with support from family members, teammates, on social media, random people. It's been almost nothing but support. That's great to hear. Yeah. Very great to hear. Uh, Lainey, why did you decide to fight? What's your story? Well, with my experiences playing soccer since I was very little and then growing up with brothers and playing against men or boys against pickup games and everything like that, I realized from a very young age the difference between our bodies with women and biological males. And I wanted to fight for women, not only in West Virginia, but everywhere. There's women like Maddie and all the other athletes that I've been able to meet who I totally feel for their stories and I just want to make sure that doesn't happen to any other girls. So the fight that you guys are fighting today, it is a fight for your peers, but it's a fight for those who are in elementary school right now. Yeah. It's a fight for those of tomorrow, the athletes of tomorrow. So uh, good on you for that. What advice do you have for girls your age or perhaps girls who are much younger than you when they face the same thing? Because unfortunately this fight's long from over, right? Sadly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would tell those girls that don't give up, you know, um, if you have an opportunity to compete, go and compete and put everything out there that you have and take the opportunity, but to not keep fighting and get their voice out there and tell their legislators and their coaches that they want fair competition and it's something that they want to fight for. Yes, keep competing and there's women who are so supportive. We saw that today that so many women came out and were supportive and it might be nerve-wracking taking the first step, but now that we've done that, I know that we've had such an amazing opportunity and just being able to be around women who are so supportive and enlightening, it's amazing. What are your peers, uh, like your fellow athletes saying, like peers who are losing, who are losing positions, who are not being podiumed, who are not being going to the Ivy Leagues uh, championships because of male competition? Uh, have you seen many who are in favor of it, opposed to it, what are we saying? Um, I actually witnessed a teammate of mine get bumped off a podium due to losing to a biological male. And I've talked to her about it and I've talked to other teammates about it and all of us do agree it's unfair. The opinion of what should happen is kind of different between us, but uh, they all really support us and um, I've been doing this lawsuit with my teammate MK and they've been supporting her and I um, throughout it and they believe that we're doing it in the right way um, by getting our voice out there and just, you know, really advocating for fairness in women's sports. Yeah. So, um, Christiana, we'll go to you. Uh, how long have you been defending female athletes, and why do you do it? Sure. 
Well, I first became involved in this issue back in 2019. As you may be aware and your listeners may be aware, two biological males in the state of Connecticut took 15 women's state championship titles over the course of just a few seasons and knocked out deserving female athletes from placements and podium spots, championship titles, and potential scholarship opportunities. We'll never know fully how many young women across the state of Connecticut were impacted. So Alliance Defending Freedom had the privilege of uh, filing the first federal lawsuit in the nation on their behalf. And it's been a privilege to just watch the number of female voices across the country grow because courage begets courage. And so as they, as they see other women standing up and speaking out, it gives courage to future generations of female athletes to do the same. And so that's just been really awesome to see. Courage begets cur- that That's such, such a good line. The compounding influence of courage, of bravery. That's, I'm very glad you said that. That's really good. Now, you also filed a case in Connecticut uh, in, the federal, in, in the federal district court. Uh, they basically said, this case doesn't really matter. The, the guys who are competing have graduated. Why does it still matter, though, to you? Yeah, it was incredibly disappointing to see the federal judge dismiss the female athlete's case. And what he essentially said was, the two male athletes have graduated and your losses don't matter. And that's a horrific message to any young woman to say, you've been displaced, you've been pushed down in, in, in rankings, you lost, uh, you actually should have been named the champion, and yet you were not. And that simply doesn't matter. Males can come in and just take that away from you. And that's wrong. That's a violation of Title IX. So we have appealed that decision to the Second Circuit, and we're currently waiting for an oral argument date. Donna De Verona, do you guys know that name? I don't. Multi, oh, it's okay. I, I hardly know her. I'm <laughs> older, but uh, basically, she uh, was a swimmer many years ago and a multi gold medal award. I mean, she has she is very decorated, and now she's a, an activist. Um, and she came out the other day and basically said um, regarding the FINA, is it FINA? FINA? We'll say FINA. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're basically the uh, the swimming authority, the advisors to the uh, International Olympic Committee. And they came out and said, you know, because of the science here, we're saying that if, if they were not, if they did not transition before puberty, then it's not fair to compete. And that's, you know, that, that made headlines a lot lately. But I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, they based this on science. This was not a partisan thing. If it were, they probably would have voted the other way. But this is based on science. This is based on data. So do you think this is a, do you think this, well, I know you think it's a good move, but do you think it's positive? Uh, do you think it's a good thing that they based it on science, and how do you think it's going to affect possibly not just the Olympics, but the NCAA and, and other sports? I think it's a step in the right direction, and I hope that other entities and organizations will follow suit and make similar decisions because it's not a question of if these athletes should compete. It's where it's fair for other women and where that place should be. I think it's very hopeful because it's finally addressing and acknowledging the fact that this is unfair, that biological males competing against females is unfair. And so I think it's very promising knowing that we're finally heading in the right direction and somebody's finally starting to do something about it. And if I can just add to that, I mean, the science is obviously extremely clear that males have a physical advantage over females, no question. And the sporting bodies are finally beginning to recognize that and, and enact policies accordingly. But my concern with this particular approach is the fact that it pushes children towards irreversible medical procedures and off-label use of drugs. So while it's a step in the right direction, anytime we're protecting fairness and safety for female athletes, I think the better path is to protect the female sex category and not have these you know, other arbitrary classifications and pushing children towards really dangerous medical procedures. No, you're right. You're very right. So they even talked about a third category. And I'm like, if you have to have a third category, then clearly there's, there's a difference. Clearly, they, you, they can't get around it. They are forcing themselves, by looking at the data, by looking at the science, they are forcing themselves to acknowledge a narrative that they have been trying to avoid for a very long time now. So good for them, I guess, for finding truth and being able to publicly acknowledge it, you know? So it's 50th anniversary of Title IX, and right now, when you have Title IX, which originally was established to create an equal platform for women in, in different capacities, we're seeing an undoing of that today. What's going on here? Um, well, I just want to say that Title IX I, is something I'm very grateful for. It's, it's the reason I'm where I am. Um, Title IX has opened the opportunity to me to have an athletic scholarship, which not only gives me the chance to compete in college, but to pay for my education, and that's going to pay the a path to my future career and that impacts the workforce and it's really holistic approach is that title nine isn't just athletics it's life yeah i agree title nine is so important and to see the impact that it's had on women through decades is amazing and it's really a sad day to see us regress and 
today's decision by the Biden administration made me upset and it made a lot of us upset that women have fought for so long and we're going to keep continue fighting. The fight's not over, but it's unfortunate that we have to continue the fight. Yeah. Can I add one more thing? <laughs> to like with the Biden's administration's decision, it's such a slap in the face to females because it's not listening to us. It's saying that we don't matter and that our sports aren't important, but in reality it is, and these opportunities are so important for us to be able to have and preserve, and Title IX did that before today. Uh, on the 50th anniversary of Title IX, I mean, we ought to be here just celebrating its successes and, you know, the opportunities it's afforded to young women like Lainey and Madison. But unfortunately, the Biden administration did choose today to issue its new proposed regulations, completely turning Title IX on its head, reinterpreting biological sex to mean gender identity, which frankly could spell the beginning of the end of women's sports as we know it. Anytime you allow biological males to come in and dominate the women's category, you're taking away opportunities from women, deserving females athletes like Laney and Madison and that's wrong. You see this like this is huge what's happening here with female athletes but it's a piece of a much bigger picture of this this undoing of that which is good the undoing of morality the undoing of virtue um, and we've seen this a lot I mean we talk about Title IX and where it was originally established for good or established for equality and now we're seeing where it is today. We also saw in, in similar things different but uh, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act if you guys are familiar with that I know you are uh, the RIFRA and basically what happened was in 1993, an overwhelming bipartisan major, um, uh, vote said yes in the House, yes in the Senate. And there was, a, and not to get partisan here, but there was a huge Democrat majority in both chambers at the time. And it passed overwhelmingly. And then, of course, Democrat President Bill Clinton. And now they're trying to pass the Equality Act, which directly undermines the very protections that people had in the RIFRA to practice their sincerely held beliefs. That's just, I mean, that's unrelated to this, but it's, it's similar and just you see this decline in, in, uh, in cultural, there's decay in cultural morality. It's really sad to see. So I'm really, really glad you guys are speaking up. Uh, Christiana, you and your colleagues at ADF, I mean, I always joke that we need to have an ADF section on our webpage because we're <laughs> constantly covering the stuff that you guys are doing. Yeah. Um, I'm proud of you. Really, really, really am.